Given the function f of x equals radical x plus 2, evaluate f of 7. All right, so in terms of this, uh, we are looking to evaluate a function, and we have steps down here on the bottom left. So what we'll do first before we even begin the steps is let's just rewrite the function. All right, so here we have f of x is equal to radical x plus 2. Now, since we're looking to evaluate the function at a particular x value, our first step is basically just to substitute now or plug in this indicated f of x for the f of x in our function. So instead of writing f of x over here, I'm now going to write f of 7. And that shall now equal radical. The second step now says to substitute x on the right for the indicated value of x on the left. So basically, instead of x now, I substituted the value of 7. So if I substituted the value of 7 on the left-hand side, guess what I have to do on the right-hand side? Anywhere I see an x, I have to substitute 7 for it. So there's going to be 7 plus 2. So therefore, f of 7 will now equal square root of 9, and this works out lovely because it is a... Uh, well, it's not 9. <laughs> it's 3, right? All right, so that takes care of that. Let's take a look at the next one. So it says solve f of x is equal to 4. Now, in terms of, I'm going to restate this, right? So uh, what they're really asking is, they're really asking us to solve 4x when f of x is equal to 4, okay? The reason why is because I know this is the only variable that's left in this statement. So I know they're asking me to really solve for x, and they're also telling me then f of x will equal 4, 4. Okay, so that's how I am interpreting that question. So now let's rewrite the original function. So it's f of x is equal to radical x plus 2. Now it wants us to, we, or I should say we know the value of f of x. They told us what it's equal to. It's equal to 4. So instead of writing this, I'm just going to write 4. And that then is equal to radical x plus 2. And our goal now is to solve for x. Okay. Now, how do we do that? Well, the first thing is you probably realize that we got to get rid of this square root. So how do we get rid of a square root? We square. If we square the right, we better square the left. So 4 squared is 16. And then now we just cancel the square root. So this is just x plus 2 now. Right? And this is great because solving for x here should be fairly straightforward. Right? This is just now going to be 14 is equal to x. And there you go. Right, if you had to even, so these are the answers. If you had to think about it in graphical form, right, we have this particular function up here. Okay, the function looks something like this. It'll look something like that, where this will start the lowest value x could be is negative 2, because you can never have a radical under there. And when x is 0, the f of x value will be radical 2. So the value here is going to be radical 2. So what they're saying is when, so for this, so they're saying evaluate f of 7, right? So x is equal to 7. So that means we're all the way on out here. We're all the way on out. Let's say this is 7. So if I were to now go up on the graph, I would come to a value of about, as we found before, 3. Now that should make sense in terms of just this general picture. Radical 2 is 1 point something, right? So we are well above that uh, at x is equal to 7, right? When x is equal to 1, we have a value of radical 2. So this should hopefully make sense. And then it's also asking me now when f of x, so here in the second part they said f of x is 4. So that means I didn't even draw the graph, but that means 4 is somewhere up here, right? And if I were to continue this graph on out, I mean really the, the red line should be you know a little more angled up here but you'll realize that it's going to be some value greater than 7, which is what we found. We found it to be 14. All right? So hopefully that might make give it a little more context. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe. See you in the next problem.